<laughs> Mike. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Six thirty one here. Recording in progress. All right. Uh, good evening. The time is six thirty one, and we'll call this special meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order. The first item on tonight's agenda, and keep in mind this is a special meeting with, um, with only two items tonight. Um, the first item is the acceptance of an easement from Tilcon for riverfront access. And I just want to say that this, this easement that is before the Board of Selectmen tonight has been a, a very long time coming. There was a lot of work that went in to reaching out to, to Tilcon through the previous Board of Selectmen and the previous First Select Woman. And also, we've continued that effort. And so just last week, we, we received some very good news with approval of this easement agreement from Tilcon. And so we had our town attorney review the, the easement agreement with the changes. And so I, I see you have those before you. And so I think that this is a very good agreement for the town. Certainly, I, I, I really want to thank Tilcon for, for being so generous with this easement agreement because what this will eventually allow the town of Portland is to access our town of Portland property that we already have that's along the riverfront. And so with this easement, we will be able to have a road that connects to the town property and also the ability for parking of up to 20 cars. And so we will be able to use this for the potential to have a boat launch. So we might, not a, not a motorized boat launch, but canoes and, and kayaks and, and whatnot. And so I know that this has been a goal of the, uh, the Board of Selectmen for many years to, to access the riverfront and, and all of our riverfront in town. We have so much of it along the Connecticut River mm -hmm. and we, we don't have a public access to the river. So I've been working with, um, with uh, two of our former <laughs> Board of Selectmen members, uh, Rick Shar and Lou Pear, who are here tonight. And we have a meeting on this on, on Thursday. We'll be meeting to continue the next steps because the first step is, is this easement agreement and then the next step is we have to figure out how we can pay to, to get this road put in. I know we do have a, a grant for $4,000, I believe, from the Rockfall Foundation, which, uh, which will certainly help to get the ball rolling, but it's going to cost more than that. So we're gonna have to come up with a plan. And so I look forward to working with you both, and thank you, thank you both for coming tonight. Um, so did, you, did anybody wanna say anything on this? The spokesperson right over here, Rick's gonna speak. Rick, come on, come on up and <laughs> say a few words. So Lou just volunteered me. <laughs> Where's your kayak, Rick? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's it's home. <laughs> uh, Rick Shar, one sixty-eight Middle Haddam Road, and that's where uh, <clears throat> a few of my kayaks are. Um, well, when. <clears throat> I always, um, I don't have prepared statements, so I'm just going to speak off the cuff, but um, <clears throat> Portland has, if not the longest, some of the longest coastline on the Connecticut River of any town in the state. I think we have the, the longest coastline. And we have <clears throat> a, a lot of undeveloped public land along the river, but there's no access. And um, it always bothered me. <laughs> I, I started kayaking about 25 years ago, and um, I remember putting in off Route 17A, just north of uh, Middlesex Marina, and almost killing myself going down the, uh, the rocks there and the poison ivy and whatnot. Um, and I've pretty much kayaked every stretch of the river from Glastonbury, well actually Hartford to Long Island Sound. 
Anyway, <clears throat> um, I'm a member of the Connecticut River Conservancy and Rockfall Foundation, and those groups, among others, really support river ecology and river access, and they're behind this project. Um, people from the Connecticut River Conservancy have come down a few times, and we've walked, we've actually walked from Tryon Street in South Glastonbury down through the meadows, um, all the way down to the fairgrounds, and we got in our cars, we came to the current riverfront park, walked that, went down to Tilcon, and walked in there, and um, of all the spots, the most feasible seems to be this area behind Tilcon where we have something like 1,500 feet of riverfront. We own all the land between Meriden Boat Club and Riverside Marina. Um, but you can't, it's difficult to get at, but yet it's, um, <clears throat> the riverfront there is out of the main current, which I know was a concern with some of uh, some people, um, and it's just a great natural area. I mean, it needs a lot of it needs a lot of attention, clean up. It's overgrown and whatnot. But um, I think this is a good first step. I mean, the easement doesn't cost us anything. Um, I don't expect the town to <coughs> have to go to the taxpayers and have them foot the bill. But you know, maybe we could get some help from Public Works. And we'll, we'll talk more about this, I guess, if you folks approve this easement. But, you know, I've, I've got some ideas about fundraising. And, you know, maybe it, I, I just look at what we did at the Riverfront Park with the Groundstone Quorum. It took a long time, but I, I think we could do it again. And it's it, something Portland can be proud of. Um, if you go downriver, like to a town like Essex, there's all sorts of river access spots in that town and um, I think it'll be it'll bring some economic development indirect you know people will come to town to access use our resources just like they do now with the golf courses and whatnot and hopefully some of our small businesses can benefit from this you know development down the road so I'm in favor of it I hope you look favorably upon it and Questions or thank, thank, thank you, Rick. Thank, thank you, Rick. Any of the do any of the selectmen have any comments on this? Uh, well, I, Ryan, I do. Um, so yeah, I'm very proud, guys. You did great work on this. It's a great idea, and it looks like it's going to come to fruition, which is awesome. Um, so with this easement that's coming up through Tilcon, and if we invest any kind of money into this, like, what if, what if Tokon sells? Will we have the first right to refusal of the property of Tokon? Say they go out of business, I don't know, hypothetically, if we invest all this money, Tokon sales, and then we lose the easement, I'm just worried about the future of, I, do you guys know any of these questions? Like, I, I think answers? I can answer that. Okay. I think, well, that'd be an attorney question. Well, <clears throat> yeah, no, no, you, I mean, it's an attorney question, but. I, but I think the easement the, travels with the the e it, correct. The easement travels with the land. It should okay. be put on their deed that it's it goes, easement so forever. So it stays with, okay. If this goes on the land records, and then it goes with the property for forever, so. Great. That's what I wanted to hear then. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, good question. Yeah, I guess the only thing I would just note, you know, I'm certainly in favor of this. We've certainly talked oh, endlessly about trying to find a location <laughs> along the river to, to provide this access. Um, I just want to thank Tilcon again because obviously they've been a great partner with the town, allowing us to use the, in that area that we put a baseball field on for many years. So they continue to be good to the town, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Ralph. Yeah, Tilcon has been a, a wonderful partner um, with the town of Portland for many years, as you mentioned with the baseball field. I know I played ball there. I don't know mm -hmm. if anybody else did. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anybody else? I just, I, I want to take this opportunity. I mean, I appreciate Tilcon 100%, but these two guys here, Lou and Rick, I mean, I know they've taken this bull by the horns. Um, you know, and as somebody who 
knows the river and paddles a kayak like Rick does, this is great. The, Portland has some of the most, the, probably as, as Rick said, probably <coughs> the most riverfront of any town in Connecticut. The unfortunate problem is access, and the other thing is we have a beautiful park, but that park, because it was where the quarry operation was, is on the channel. And I've tried to launch kayaks down there too, and you'll get yourself killed. So, I mean, uh, when I was a very youngster, <coughs> Memorial Day weekend, they used to have hydroplane races on the river. Little miniature hydroplanes that would race up and down, and people would line up on both sides of the river, and that was the area where Meriden Yacht Club is and beyond where I remember as a really young boy sitting with my parents under the willows and that, that sandy beach. I know it's a beautiful area. It was, it was just, it, this is gold, and I really appreciate you guys for pursuing this. Would someone like to uh, introduce, read, and move the, the resolution? I'll do it. Oh, it thanks, yeah. Appreciate it. <clears throat> resolution Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, March 22, 2022. Permanent access and parking easement agreement between the Town of Portland, Tilcon Incorporated. Whereas Tilcon Incorporated, a Connecticut corporation with its principal office located in the Town of New Britain, County of Hartford, and State of Connecticut, is the owner of certain real property located in said town of Portland, Connecticut, consisting of three parcels located along Airline Avenue and described more particularly as follows. Parcel number 10-32, ID number 0014100, 1.61 acres. Parcel number 10-33, ID number 0014200, five acres. And parcel number 10-34, ID number 0014300, 17.43 acres. And whereas the easement shall be for the following purposes. Permanent access and public parking for Town of Portland Riverfront Nature Trail. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen for the Town of Portland hereby approves of and accepts the easement from Tilcon Incorporated for the permanent access and public parking for Town of Portland Riverfront Nature Trail along Airline Avenue. Is there a second? I'll second. I just want to point out, um, John, you read um, 1.61 acres. It's 16.1 uh, acres. That's I'm it. sorry. Yeah. So um, parcel, that was parcel... Uh, number. ID number yep. 0001410016.1 acres. Yep. A little you. dyslexic there. Thank you. No, for that no thank you. Um, any any further discussion <coughs> on this? Or? Okay. So uh, then I'll call for the question. All in favor of the board a resolution of p permanent access and parking easement agreement between the town of Portland and Tilcon Inc. Signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries. Thank you all. And thank you, Rick, and thank you, Lou. All right, the next item on tonight's agenda is discussion on the second amended and restated fixed assessment agreement for Brainerd Place. And Dan Bertram from BRT is here this evening. Um, before we uh, move forward with that, um, I will say that there was, after last week's meeting, there was, um, as we talked about, we. We went back and forth with, um, not really back and forth, but we agreed on an extension on paper here. And so what we did was we took what we talked about at the last meeting and, and we put it into this agreement. So I'll just quickly highlight what's changed here. So what, what this amended and restated agreement is saying is that first there will be a, a, an additional 30 day extension to April 30th to file building permit uh, e, that's building E. And then there is an additional extension for building D. And Dan, that's the Starbucks building, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. And so that would be June 30th, 2022. And the file for building permit for the Brainerd House and the Sage House would be September <coughs> 30th, 2022. Uh, 8.5 is comply with requirements for the Hart Jarvis building as outlined in Portland Planning and Zoning Commission's approval. And 8.6, complete the merger of the separate parcels into one parcel by April 30, 2022. So there are two items on here that are 
the deadline is April 30th, and that's building permit E, as well as the merging of the parcels. And I just want to highlight that BRT has agreed to cover the legal expenses with this of $2,750, and they will uh, have offered to pay a non-refundable sum of $5,000 to be applied to building permit E upon execution of this of this document. So those are those are what's changed. Dan, do you have anything to anything to say on that, or did I cover it? Thank you. Yeah, we're looking forward to seeing seeing more progress. I know we all. I know you are too. Uh, I just have one question. Uh, when it comes to 8.5, it says comply with requirements for Hart Jarvis. What are the main requirements for Hart Jarvis? Um, do you have an idea of when the house needs to be moved for your needs? So I have a question with regards to that. So I thought at one point it sounded like you may have to move that building so that you could allow access uh, access through the back uh, through Main Street coming in. You know, near to where would be a CVS we've talked about. Is there still a need for you to m move that building to move it along, or is it fall back to later in the process?
Thanks. I would just like to say, like, uh, I, um, I think a lot of the residents here in town are appreciative that you've, uh, that they're seeing some work in progress going on, which is great. And uh, I think uh, the board here has been very uh, receptive and lenient to you too. Uh, it seems to me like since December 31st, when the first date was due, um, you pretty much will have a, almost a six month extension. And I just wanted you to know that uh, we're trying to work with you here and uh, we appreciate what you're doing. If you appreciate what we're doing is what I'm saying. So thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions for Dan? I'm good. All right, well, thank you, Dan, for, for coming and, and uh, look forward to continuing to watch the progress here. Thank you. All right, well, I think we can move on to the next item, which is action on <coughs> Would someone like to introduce the resolution? Sure. Resolution, Board of Selectmen, Town of Portland, Connecticut, March 22nd, 2022. <coughs> resolution authorizing the fixing of real estate property assessments. Be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen hereby approves the second amended and restated fixed assessment agreement dated March 18th, 2022. Originally approved March 15th, 2017. Amended October 15th, 2021 between the Town of Portland and BRT DeMarco, PTP LLC, and authorizes Ryan J. Curley, the first selectman to sign the fixed assessment agreement on the town's behalf. Is there a second? I make this, okay. Uh, thank you, Sean. I just wanna point out, um, it's a, it was amended October 14th, uh, 2021, uh, for the record, uh, not the 15th. Any, any further discussion? on this? Seeing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of the resolution of the Board of Selectmen, March 22nd, 2022, resolution authorizing the fixing of real property assessments, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you all, and thanks again, Dan. Thank you. All right, have a good night. All right, and we do have public comment with this meeting. So is there any public comment in the audience? Is there any public comment in the chat? With that, with no public comment, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. I, make, I make a motion we adjourn the special meeting. Thank I'll you, session. Sean. And thank you, Bobby. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys. And we'll see you at seven o'clock. Thank <laughs>
The time is 7 o'clock, so we will get started with our Board of Selectmen budget workshop. Today, the first item we have is the Board of Education, and we have our Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Charles Britton here. Uh, Charles, would you like to come up and sure. take the stage? <laughs> and so I believe, so the selectmen know, I believe everyone was present at last week's public hearing where we watched your video, I yeah. think, and thank you for that. And um, so, uh, but if you could give us, you know, a sure. summary. Well, thank you for letting me present that way. As you can see, I'm re recovering here, but uh, you know, that was, was not a good day. I was definitely a little loopy, so he did not want me presenting in person, so I was glad <laughs> I was able to put that video together for you. Um, you know, but I, I, I just wanted to kind of reiterate with, the, with respect to how we built the budget this year. We were very conscious this year to make sure that we aligned every nickel of our budget in some way to the, the board goals that we set out. So when I, when I presented to you I, um, and, and the community was not only the, the fiscal resources we need, but I think it's pretty much the vision for, for the district for at least the next several years, right? I mean, we have a lot going on here, um, but I, I do think we have our priorities straight, right? You know, continuing to maximize the health and safety of our students, focusing on some of the pretty serious um, social and emotional needs that our students are facing as we're coming out of, out of the pandemic. Um, certainly our focus on equity, um, our, our, our planning for the years to come uh, with respect to the, our the facility needs, right? And we have a committee that's working really hard on that. And actually, next Monday night, we have a very consequential meeting with our architects to start actually um, getting some numbers attached to some of these options that we're looking at. So I would say that all of the, um, the dollars in the budget are aligned to our board goals. And that you know, as you ask me questions about any of the allocations, I would love to be able to not only answer the questions about the allocations, but reflect on how those allocations are, are supporting us in our efforts to move the district forward over the rest of this year and in, in the years to come. Um, so with that said, were there any specific questions you had or, um, you know, happy, I'd be happy to answer and Stephanie's here and, you know, we can go down to a, as granular detail as you need. We'll go to the select one. Semi-granular. Okay. <coughs> Do what what would you be using using the this as the guide, or well, I tell you what. Why don't why don't we we start with the the big picture then? Um, you, you know, the the percent increase that we're looking for year over year is two point seven five percent. You know, that compares um, to two point seven six um, last year, and then I gave you a four year look back. It was two point two six and two point four two. So um, this year we're we're bringing forward a request of twenty two million seven hundred ninety two thousand nine hundred nine dollars, which represents again a two point seven five percent increase year over year. Now, as we're all aware, you know, Stephanie and I are very conscious of many of the, the increases that we're experiencing as a function of inflation and, and some of the things happening on the world stage. Um, right now, we're, we're pretty comfortable that, that 2.75 is what we need um, to get us started for next year. And, and Stephanie and I are going to be watching very carefully as we consider gas and oil and the effects of inflation and pretty much everything is going up across the board. Um, so I think we're heading into a difficult year. I have to be completely honest. I think that you're probably hearing that from all of your department heads. Um, but, you know, again, we, we wanted to start at a place that we thought was reasonable and doable. Um, but I would be concerned about going much below that, especially in these relatively uncertain times. Um, with respect to that, though, that 2.75% that generally puts us in a pretty strong position. You know, we're not looking for any um, cuts to faculty and staff. I think we're going to be able to maintain most of our faculty and staff. There is one position that we're bringing back. It's an administrative position, which is an assistant principal. Um, that individual has responsibility for athletics. Um, we made a change. Um, in the past, Portland High School had an athletic director. We sort of reflected on that position and made a decision that the athletic department is a little too small to merit a full-time administrative position. What we really need is an assistant principal you know, to help with both schools 
you know, keep an eye on things, keep the kids safe, but also manage athletics. So I worked with the um, Administrators Association, uh, and that's one change. So that's not really a new position in the district. That's a change from um, athletic director to assistant principal, and that individual has responsibilities for athletics. Um, aside from that, we did add a few uh, paraprofessional positions into the budget. <coughs> um, paraprofessionals work directly one-on-one -on -one with our neediest students um, for a, a variety of different reasons. But um, we ha ha are seeing some increased student needs in our um, special education programming, and those additional paraprofessionals are going to make sure our kids' needs are met at the very um, micro ca classroom level. Um, aside from that, I, I would generally describe this as a pretty status quo budget. Um, the, the one thing I do want to point out is we haven't brought forward this year, aside from our conversations about the track, any major requests for capital improvements. Generally, Carl's here and, and he can answer those questions for you. The budget next year helps us maintain our existing facilities. We know that we have a lot of facility needs across our buildings particularly at Valley View, Gildersleeve, and Brownstone. But um, we decided to kind of hold off on bringing for, forward any uh, major requests for capital improvements until this facility st study committee does its work. Right? So I'm hoping that by June, we're going to be able to come forward with the report that you commissioned this committee to bring to you. Um, and then next year, we can talk about a modernization plan that will in include some um, recognition of the needs that the facilities have um, across the district. So generally speaking, this, this budget, I think, keeps us on the, the course that we're headed. It keeps us in, in a good position um, and, and allows us to move forward and, and build on a lot of the, the fine things we've accomplished this year. One other thing I just wanted to point out. Um, with respect to the, the ESSER money, the, the, the federal funds that we received for the, the coronavirus relief, um, I know I mentioned it in the video, but I did just want to bring out, we do have $312,000 left of that funding that is available to us. Now, that funding is available to us for as part of a three-year grant, so it's available to us this year, next year, and the year after. Right Now, we do have um, a, a well more than half of that money already either spent or earmarked for a social worker, some paraprofessionals, and then some summer learning programs that we're going to do this summer next summer and the summer after. My recommendation at this point, though, is with respect to that $312,000, let's keep that in the bank. Right? I think it would be wise not to earmark that now for a couple of reasons. One, while we all hope we're out of the pandemic, you know, I think we still need at least another couple of months to you know, you know, really make sure we've turned that corner, God willing. Um, and then, you, you know, if we are truly out of the pandemic, that money can certainly be allocated for things to help our students recover from any learning loss that was sustained during the pandemic. And it can also be used for some facilities projects, specifically things that might help us improve our indoor air quality. So um, some of our HVAC systems, or lack thereof, in some of our schools need work. So if we get to a point where we have some of that funding available for the next two years, this might help us start chip away, chipping away at some of those capital projects that I imagine is going to come out of recommendations from this facility study committee. So we have a lot of balls in the air, but um, again, with respect to um, the year-over-year -year budget, I think 2.75%, uh, I hope, is perceived as reasonable, and I think it, it helps us you know, continue to make sure your, your children are getting a great education, which I guarantee you they are. So I, I just I have a question. Obviously, over time we've talked about a lot about these projects in the schools. Um, I'm just curious. I know that, um, and I remember when it was, but I remember being in Valley View as garbage bales were in the hallway collecting water coming out of the ceiling. I'm just curious about that one because obviously I know you, you, the intent is let's leave everything alone because we got to find out what we're going to do going forward. I'm just curious about that issue that Valley View had. Is where where does that stand? It's still there. Carl, do you want to help out with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we can hear you. It's it the, the issue is still there, and it, it, it involves the chimney. And yeah, no, I know it involved the chimney, and, and, and I know literally that's a which way project. the wind blows. So, <laughs> you know, Carl, Carl can give you an, an update on that. So, that's all part of the big project, though. Um, that. I had a quote for 68,000 to 
take the chimney down to a certain point, then they would encapsulate it in steel. If we were to probably renovate that school completely, the entire chimney would come down and we would um, put a whole new manifold in the boiler room and then come up with a steel stack like they have, like you see at the high school when you pull up the driveway. Um, things have changed a lot, obviously, since we talked about that project. When we get wind out of the southwest, that's when we seem to get water in there, but it's like finding a needle in a haystack. Oh, and yeah, I know those towns. I just, we've <laughs> kind of put the project on hold until we decide. If we start heading in a direction where, you no, know, we're definitely, I don't want to, keeping that, then maybe we can fix that earlier. Yeah, no, I, the reason I ask is obviously we talk about it's a couple years down the road probably, and so that was pretty stuck in my head. And that's why I was curious. Does that mean, do we somehow find a, we're actually a stopgap way, or it sounds like, no, we just got to hope the wind blows it. Yeah, and it's a lot of new ceiling tiles. <laughs> it is, it is, in a certain small area. So close some of it up a little bit better and, you know, you want to move in that direction to do the project we can certainly oh no do. i'm just i was just asking I, I mean i realize the challenge of where we are but i'm just yeah, curious and, and in fairness carl will be the first to tell you that all of our facilities i mean we haven't visited the, the gilderslave and looked at the parking lot recently you know there are all of our buildings have considerable work that needs to be done but you know this year we, we made a decision that before we came forward with any sixty eight thousand dollar or other requests we really needed to let the committee do its work so that we could come forward with a more comprehensive plan that was a little less piecemeal. Because you know the, the committee's going to be bringing forward, I think, some some suggestions that may involve moving on from some of these goals. May <coughs> we have we have work to do. We are that, that, that is not you know in, in the cards right now. I'm not prepared to say that, but you know, we don't want to go you know sinking money into anything until we know what, what Portland will look like over the next five ten years, which is in essence the exciting work that's happening right now. And it's gonna, our next meeting date is, is April 4th, um, and you know, lots of things to come. Thanks for the update. I have a question for you. Um, so last year during the budget season, we uh, accomplished getting a $1.5 million capital lease for the, the Board of Ed and, and the town side. Yeah. We used some of that money uh, to buy Chromebooks last year. Right. Do you happen to have a number of Chromebooks we bought last year? Is it 500, 575. 575, and then in this year's budget, you are also with proposing to buy more Chromebooks? So what's exciting about that is we received another grant called the Connectivity Grant. Okay. Um, we received, it's, it's in two batches. The first batch is $165,000, and the second batch is $80,000. That's federal money that was also connected to coronavirus release. Relief, that's gonna allow us to purchase the next half of the Chromebooks. So we're not, we don't have that anywhere in our budget. That's something that we, we received a grant what's, for. All right, what's the next half? How much would that buy? How many Chromebooks? 480. Yeah, we'll get, we'd have to get you the exact 175 number. 175 roughly? Well, it's it's a hundred. There's there's it's in two batches. There's yep. one hundred and sixty-five thousand, and then there's eighty thousand. So oh, and you think it'd be about four hundred Chromebooks? No, we're not using all the funding for the Chromebooks. Correct. We're, we're just about one hundred and seventy-five Chromebooks, yep. and then the rest is for other hardware purchases. Hopefully, that's right. Uh, yep. Smart boards, um, projectors, uh, teacher replacement desktops, uh, yep. other, other types of hardware purchases. Yeah. And I'm just like thinking forward. Is, are you guys going to have a rotation of year, a yearly? What are you guys going to look for every year for Chromebooks? So the 175 will get everybody up to having a functioning working Chromebook within in probably two years, I would think. Um, and then the rest of the three years, it would have to start. The whole get the cycle again, like you would need another 575 Chromebooks? Yeah, I guess that's what I'm getting at. Do you have a replacement cycle and plan where every year you're just going to do 120 and then carry on and so on? Every year, just ask for that many and rotate them out. Instead of getting hit with this big number every couple of years, like, do you have a plan in place for that? We do, yes. Do. We, we have, a, we have a, an entire hardware replacement cycle that, we're, that we, we actually developed it three years ago, and we've been following it. We've been actually pretty good about keeping up with it. 
Um, I, I certainly could provide you a copy of that, and I, I know our new director of curriculum instruction and technology, my former role, mm -hmm. uh, ha has that laid out, and we could <coughs> provide that to you. We, our problem with the Chromebooks and all of our technology, of course, is that over the years we sort of bought different amounts at different times, and they, they a lot of them are coming out from under warranty at different times. It's not like we bought them all at once and then have to replace <coughs> them all at once again. Um, there's there are different models, N21s, N22s, that are, are still in rotation. Um, this second purchase of 175 will get us on a more consistent cycle and allow us to cycle out the ones that are no, essentially paperweights at this point. Um, but the, the, the funding that you provided us last year with the lease was very helpful and very much appreciated. And I see the kids using those new under warranty devices, particularly at the middle school and high school every day. Um, so thank you for that. Um, at, but between that and this connectivity grant that, w that we received, we're gonna be in really good shape with respect to Chromebooks for at least the next two years. But then yes, we're gonna have to you know, continue to cycle things, um, uh, cycle them through. Uh, and again, mostly that's a, a function of when they come out from under warranty. Um, well, all these are five-year warranty? Is it a four or five-year warranty? Four year. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that plan uh, if you can email it to me. And sure. At your convenience, no rush on it, but thank Absolutely, you. Yeah. Any other questions? So I'll just mention we got the, we're gonna work on the track, right? Absolutely. It's something that we'll, we'll work on with a, an <coughs> RFP soon, right? Yeah, I think we're um, going with an, working on RFQ. And then yeah, from, right. from that, we would follow up with an RFP. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Stephanie and Tom are hard at work putting that together. Yeah. Uh, I have one question. What is the difference between coaching salaries and extracurricular salaries? Um, extracurricular, that, that, would that include all of our stipends? Yeah, I think that would be different. But it's a, it's a lot of the clubs and activities that teachers run, ski club. Um, oh my God, we have a, a list in the of dozens and dozens of, of you know, things that teachers run after school with their students. Not the least of which was, I hope you got to see Little Mermaid. So it was, that was great. So that would be one of them. Okay. Twice. <laughs> well, um, thank you, Charles. Yeah, thank, you. Uh, thank you, Carl, and thank you, Stephanie, uh, for for all your all your work on this, and also to the Board of Education who are here as well. Thank you all for coming tonight. This point is. I think Tom okay. is in the hallway. We're going to move on to. Public Works. I know our Public Works Director Bob Shea is here as well. Thank you, Bob, for coming. I think we'll just wait one moment for Tom. So, see what page we're on. Is Tom in the hallway? Do you know where? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, thank you, Mike. Page 57, I think. Thank you. 57, yeah, I think so. Let's see. Page one. Here he is. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Hey. Hi, Tom, how you doing? So, <coughs> we'll move.
move on with public works and other related funds. Okay. So we're going to go to page 57. Okay, page 57 starts with the Public Works Director Budget. Public Works Director Budget is made up of the Public Works Official and his Administrative Assistant. Other items within that budget are for meetings and dues, and the hazardous wa the household hazardous waste um, amounts. There's been changes in that program, so there's times it's uh, it seems like it continues to go up because the vendor relationship continues, as well as there's quite a bit of usage from the participants. So. That's one of those ones that does swing um, every year. So you'll see a slight increase in that, and we'll keep monitoring that. Page 58, Page 59 is the highway budget. There is a, a little <coughs> bit of a decrease in the payroll, and that was there was, a, there was some transition of employees. Some employees uh, have left the town, and uh, therefore some of the replacements are at a lower cost. So we see a, a, a lower amount in, in that item. The uh, overtime item in this category is more for all year round overtime, not snow and snow removal, but uh, some generally storm related. And um, sometimes in the high, in the summer times when they're doing the road work, they need to do that on um, different hours or additional uh, times. Um, also, you know, if there are, um, storms where there's trees down and things of that nature that there's calling um, the uh, remainder of that budget one of the bigger increases as we had spoken about is the gas and diesel estimate that's is utilizing around the three dollar per gallon for the gas and diesel um, and, and you see that in 51001 so that was a pretty big hit in that budget, so we had to try to minimize in other areas. We did go up um, slightly in equipment supplies. We're seeing uh, costs of equipment supplies going up um, in across the board, so we were trying to cover in that area. And uh, same thing with road materials. We see the cost of road um, materials going up. So overall, that is a 2.4 increase within this budget. Uh, page 61 is the vehicle maintenance budget. The vehicle maintenance budget is made up of a full-time mechanic and an assistant mechanic. Uh, they maintain the fleet of all town vehicles. Um, that includes police, fire, uh, highway, all the other public works, and also some of the Board of Ed fleets. Um, there, here we've uh, tried to stabilize uh, this increase. It's more prob the majority of it is payroll based on contractual rates. Um, so that's really the increases that you see in that fund. Count. Page 63 is the town engineer. The town engineer budget is one that um, there's some budget years where we're uh, within the budget, some years we're not. The two here do show it within the, the dollar value. In the past it had been over. There's been a quality ability because of the various projects we're running we've been able to try to allocate items to the projects so that's also been a helpful um, uh, matter when when possible we um, allocate to the projects um, so there's there are some additional uh, needs in, in um, items here um, so there are areas that may possibly go over but uh, there, at this time there, there was the uh, there was no amount increased in this budget. I have a quick question. So I know that we're going to do water and sewer work, and that's requires some engineering. Is that accounted for here, or does that get accounted for later on? What water and sewer in what manner? A project? Or yeah, a project. A project would be included within the project. Okay, so it doesn't get accounted for at all in, in this in this uh, line on these light items. If it's a specific project issue uh, where the project has been funded it would be in the project okay. are you talking about the russell avenue water yeah main? yeah that's something. and then the russell avenue water main and then the pump station in that same neighborhood that's what he's asking it's yeah. included in the price they would now be in this budget yeah 
Okay, just to make sure, I'm just trying to understand with a project, it's all going to be contained within the project. That's, that's what I'm asking. To my knowledge, at this current point, yeah, that would okay. be where it would be. Is uh, you know, if there's some other um, rationalization comes up why that couldn't be, which I, it doesn't appear to that there is, then we would address that at the time. But no, I'm just that was just, just a general question. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, there are times in the water and sewer budgets where there is engineering monies for specific water and sewer matters, and there's also monies in capital where there's water and sewer matters, and there's outside funds where the ARPA money is, is another, is an outside fund, and there is, would be engineering and those items. The one that generally we're not allowed to charge the majority of the design is the connectivity grant, which was funded in this year's capital. And that was f the engineering is paid through by the municipal grants and aid out of Fund 84 as that component. And then the work that is construction would be out of the connectivity grant. And then that funding for construction administration, which is allowable, would be uh, included um, with inspection, more inspection than construction administration. There's some construction administration is allowable in the connectivity, but more um, inspection. And so those are included. Otherwise, the remainder would be covered by uh, funds in Fund 84. Okay, thanks. Okay. Page 65 is uh, street lighting. There's a 2%, 2.5% increase in street lighting, and that's more on the distribution side. Um, as we have a, a pretty good um, improved, we did, we did have an improved rate uh, in, uh, for the supply. But we do have, uh, we've been seeing an increase in distribution. Uh, Tom, I just have a quick question. A, lo a number of the lights in town have been replaced to that more energy efficient lighting. Has that made any impact on our proposed costs? Yeah, you've seen that in the past years. It's been a few years now and there's, and it's gone down. And you've seen it, <coughs> you've seen it stabilized, but distribution continues to go up. It was a decent increase in mm -hmm. the past year. So, yeah. so um, it's more on the distribution side. Right. But yeah, it was definitely um, in, the, in, the, in the prior budget, uh, uh, as well as, you know, as we stated, that th those the savings do seem to continue within the, uh, in the supply side. Well, I mean, that would correlate to delivery as well. Mm -hmm. it's one of the so definitely, yeah, those are good improvements. Uh, um, they were good improvements. Uh, page uh, 67 is the ground maintenance budget. The ground maintenance budget has three full-time employees and one part-time. The <coughs> during the request, they did ask for a fourth um, uh, full-time employee. That uh, was not. Uh, was not funded in this budget. Um, so they have the uh, salaries of the contractual um, amounts for the uh, current employees. Um, we went slightly up on the uh, part-time uh, employees with thinking with the park being fully ours, that there'd be essential items for additional time needed there. Uh, the overtime here for the grounds department is all, all, uh, all overtime. Um, that includes snow removal. Um, so in the heavy year like fiscal 22 has been with snow removal, you'll see that that's, it, you know, it'll be, we're at the number or probably over on that number. On other <coughs> years where it's lighter, you'll see lighter amounts. Um, the, there's a various work in here for the general contract work. Um, some um, estimates in there as well as the potential for the splash pad uh, maintenance if there needs to be uh, work within that. Um, we'll have to see how that works out. Um, they've been doing pretty well within their gas and diesel budget line, so we stayed, um, we didn't go up very, we didn't go up as we had gone up on other areas. Hopefully that, um, that will uh, be able to maintain. Uh, we are seeing uh, some, we've seen additional increases in uh, ground supplies as well. Page 69 has, this is the building maintenance for all town buildings. There are three full-time employees in this budget. 
and the 1001 are, is the contractual amounts for those employees. Um, service contracts is a lot mostly to do much most likely the highest number component of that is our HVAC contracts but there God bless you but bless there are you. other um, items there there are definitely other service contracts within that there's um, the, 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 the fire alarms there's pest control um, various uh, contractual types of arrangements that would be needed but HVAC is a HVAC and uh, is a, is a decent component of that number. Um, as you go down, the remainder of this budget has mostly been kept intact. Um, some slight increases with custodial supplies as we anticipate the, those to go up. As well as building supplies, we have that increasing. It seems, seems like with the additional work and additional cost with the current team, um, they're getting projects done and, and items completed so with that you need to have the building supplies intact so 3.49 percent increase uh, page 71 is our snow removal budget um, so this budget you know uh, can fluctuate definitely by the year by the issue by the item um, so we've been trying to creep this budget up in time to get it to a more stable because there was a long period of time where overtime wasn't increased in that so we're trying to continue as, as time goes on um, uh, you know the in the overtime wages generally go up there as you can see like in 21 um, there was some serious considerable overtime there so uh, we went up uh, this for a slight amount of money here within the overtime line and that's uh, what we recommended for that increase 3.6 So that is um, the general fund components uh, for the public works department. There are, um, on page 107, there's a few transfers that are um, for public works and uh, Board of Ed again, the uh, 903 is the building maintenance fund. We have a building maintenance fund, fund 11 where we transfer in um, about uh, 41000 for the town and 41000 for the board <coughs> annually um, so that um, projects that don't fall either don't fall or are not funded within the capital or they're just uh, or, or they're bigger projects that that are not in, uh, able to be handled within the operating fund um, fall within to that into that fund um, we have a transfer out to resource recovery of 198 996 um, the 587 587850 for transfer other is actually transferred to the water fund for fire um, hydrant usage and maintenance um, we will get to the park and rec fund that has a transfer out of 243960 um, the open space transfer is a transfer for based on um, the ordinances it's a required transfer out and then we have the uh, amounts for uh, capital non-recurring for the town of 32,000 uh, 322,000 and for the board of ed for 12,000 which is causing an uh, increase uh, of 37.01 percent in in this uh, this area so we go to Page 113, uh, which is the sewer fund. So the sewer fund is, um, the, 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 the sewer and the water fund are often driven by expenditures and then the revenues are estimated to be, to be back into that uh, funding stream so we did not really change much in the revenue side other than increasing the user charges to go up to meet the demands of the um, of the expenditures so going to 114 the expenditures here make up of um, 
three there's three uh, main employees in the sewer plant, and then there's a half time of the sewer water and sewer clerk. The other half of that goes to the water side. Um, we have the board clerk. Then there's the related um, the related personnel and fringe benefit expenditures of the of the uh, the individuals within those funds and the pension contributions. Um, the service contract, um, one of the uh, main things that was not in tw fiscal 21 was the uh, pipe cleaning. Due to COVID, we were uh, unable to get that accomplished. So you'll, that will, you know, if, if uh, that was accomplished, we'd be right into where our budgetary numbers um, are. Um, uh, as you see here on 38010, if there's certain items that would be um, not pro, uh, not it would be engineering, but maybe on a smaller scale for the sewer department, they would be in this budget. But um, most of the ones were project driven, so they were within fund eight, which was a capital fund. Um, electricity uh, has has gone up in this in this fund there's you know there, there, there's a heavy amount of equipment utilization um, and there as activity uh, I think a lot with the COVID there was a much more I think it was more activity in the water and sewer side so there was additional uh, expenditures in this fund so we, we've made um, an estimate there of a potential increase in that as well for next year And then the request of the capital non recurring will be supported by the uh, back schedule um, in capital in, in the capital fund. So that's a 3.03% increase to the expenditures for this budget. On page 116, a similar type of scenario with uh, water. Um, the, the revenue side is, is significantly driven by. Um, by the expenditures. There also was a few um, additional s changes that had uh, last year that had gone into effect that were partial <coughs> year. So we're, we're, we're thinking that some of the areas such as like the meter charges will hit or get very close to the number in the budget because this will be a full year of the prior years, previous years increases. Um, so um, that is um, where you're seeing the increase the to the, uh, of the increase in the fund, the majority of that went to meter sales. That's where it generally goes within this budget, is the offset area. Um, and then the 58,750 uh, 58, is the transfer in from the general fund that we spoke about on the other page. You see that was an outflow. This is the inflow. The water department <laughs> is made up of two employees that are water employees. And then there's the other part of the water and sewer clerk um, is in this budget that they're related expenditures and um, overtime for the projects uh, for the teams are in here for the employees. Um, uh, we, don't, we don't expect a, a large, large increase in water. It seems like MDC is uh, coming with a, a a more reasonable number this year. So as you see, you'll see that uh, increase is estimated based on their their increase. The other uh, items within here are just items within the uh, the request from the director um, and uh, and expectations <coughs> of various areas where that we will have uh, potential increases. And both the water and sewer, I'm sorry, um, uh, and sewer, uh, that is has come clean off as of fiscal 21. And on water, uh, you'll see that there is still um, some, some clean water notes. Those were the uh, high street uh, water main project and the water tanks projects that we did a few years back. But on the water, on the sewer side, the uh, debt is come off, and that's why you're seeing the higher increase into the transition into capital. Um, generally, when debt goes down, you try to increase capital 
Um, I think we did attempt to do that on the water side last year when some debt fell off and that was we were not able to make that work with the uh, required increases. There's a slight increase in this year's capital on water um, and there was more or less to fund specific uh, projects that were noted. Next page is 122, which is the Town Aid Road Fund. The Town Aid Road Fund is a state grant that <coughs> is a great program that we receive that helps us, allows us to chip seal and make other road improvements. It's a main um, public works activity um, every every year. So this is a, a great, a great uh, grant program, a great fund, and um, it's a pure, um, whatever we get from the state and then uh, we spend those on road materials so um, there's an expectation of 239.056 with uh, related expenditures page 127 is the resource recovery fund resource recovery fund is more or less the transfer station um, in the miscellaneous it's there's uh, some rental property for uh, the rental income that we get from um, clothing recyclers uh, the uh, facility permit increase that we had uh, implemented seems to have more or less gotten to where our expectation was on the permit revenue so that's um, uh, worked out okay um, we hope that the sale of metal will continue to be um, strong the recycling of metal will be strong uh, bags are, are different, so we do the pay as you throw model. You, the people have to buy the bags to throw out their garbage. Um, there's some, sometimes we're able to meet the goals and some we are not. We have um, lowered some of the expectations of our revenue there um, as we had not hit that, uh, the uh, projected numbers for a few years now. So uh, we, um, we were not expecting that we were going to, you know, somehow <coughs> make, uh, get to that number. Bulky waste or revenue, uh, we had an increase in that uh, expense, and therefore we think that uh, the charge, so we think that we were able to generate more uh, bulky waste uh, amounts there. And then last year was the first year of the brush, um, so we're thinking we're going to be able to generate close to that amount of uh, revenue for the brush pickup. Uh, the transfer in the account uh, is the transfer from general fund that makes up uh, the difference between uh, more or less again expenditure driven um, with uh, revenue that we we hope to uh, to to bring in and some of these things when we bring in revenue we have to kind of offset it with an increase to expense so sometimes it's it's hard when you increase revenues you have to almost increase expense with it in some areas the the resource recovery has two employees in that. They have their related benefits in the top section. Um, then the uh, service contract is much of that. There is uh, some items in that are for the software for the scale, and uh, a good uh, portion of that is when we do brush grinding. Um, we have a contract, a service contract for that component. The uh, tipping, you, you, got, you all have been apprised uh, of the various activities with the tipping uh, fees, and, and you've made some uh, approvals on the, those type of agreements. So you see those, uh, you see some of that uh, related activity and work within page 129 and 88012 and 130 is the building maintenance fund. The building maintenance fund, we still have funds that the town and the board utilize to do various um, projected work or or items that are repairs that are not within our budget um, and our operating budget that can't be funded there or other types of, uh, of projects um, 
and uh, it's, a, it's been very, very effective for both um, the town and the board um, to uh, get, get projects completed. Um, so that um, money was on not increased this year, but it, would, it remained stable. So those are the those are the public works ones. The last um, uh, special revenue type fund that we have to talk about tonight is the parks and rec uh, fund. <clears throat> so the parks and rec fund you see has a, a decent sized increase in uh, in the transfer. The transfer this year was one hundred ninety three seven hundred. Next year at two forty three nine sixty. The majority of that is uh, is directly related to um, there was ARPA funds that were considered to be um, included for. Um, fiscal year 22, uh, spoken with the director and we're, we're reviewing, and uh, the director, myself, first selectman, we're reviewing the use of, you know, can, what, you know, what can we get completed? Can we complete items within that, of the ARPA funds within this fund? Um, or is there additional general fund items that would need to be brought over in fiscal 22 to cover um, <coughs> some of that and use the ARPA funds on some other task? But in next year's budget, the uh, ARPA funds were not included, and therefore that was replaced within this. The Parks and Rec Fund is, a, is very much a work in process um, with, the, with the COVID area era. So we're just uh, trying to hopefully get fiscal 23 back into um, the pre-pandemic uh, situation and program activity and level. Uh, one of the main things that they uh, did start with this year um, they did start back the uh, Kids Blast program, which previously used to be in the youth um, <coughs> youth area. Um, it had just currently does not have as many uh, participants as it did prior to the pandemic. Um, but those are things that they'll you know, continue to work on growing um, that project as well, as well as all the other projects that this uh, department has uh, run. There's uh, two major main employees are the director and uh, the clerical staff <coughs> and then there are a various team of uh, temporary payroll would be the kids blast uh, personnel and employees and the teen recreation payroll is all other types of um, employees that would work to help support the uh, we call it teen recreation but it's the it's the it's the recreate the uh, other park and rec activities that they they do within the within the um, town here the Revenues on the charge for services, flipping back, sorry, on the page there, but we, we uh, the, the, the director thought it would be a good idea to leave the majority of these the same as, as the 21 year obviously was, was not uh, hitting the goals that we expected. Um, in 22, um, you're seeing some areas of improvement and then we'll, there's some areas that still need uh, work and uh, so that we're hopefully seeing that in 2023, there'll be an, um, a, a level brought back to where we once were. Expenditures, again, with keeping revenues uh, very similar, expenditures were kept quite similar. Um, The uh, on uh, the transfer out to workers comp. That's the that's the part uh, the parks and recs uh, component of the workers comp contribution. Um, with their uh, with their increase in uh, a salary that was allocated uh, based on team pay, uh, payroll as well as um, the temporary payroll and then the uh, the employees um, that had to be adjusted. So we had a in my estimated calculation there, I had to make an adjustment based on the salary, um, and that's why you see a, an increase in two line nine zero zero one six, um, and that should be pretty close to the amounts going forward. The workers' comp was more or less flat, but there was a reallocation within uh, the global uh, fund structure. Some of the other funds <coughs> went down, and this one uh, went up due to the fact that it was taking. Uh, payroll that used to be within used to be within fund seven and there was some of it that used to be within the general fund when uh, the uh, administrative assistant was split 
So now we go, I can go into page 135, which is uh, the capital improvement plan. Um, just have a note on page uh, 135 there, in the fourth paragraph down, this is the following details list the 290, that should be $334,000. Uh, so we'll get that corrected going forward. But there is, uh, the, the, the capital plan has in it from 2023 to 2027, uh, $41,541,295 of total projects that are, you know, estimated the first year is always uh, what, what we, uh, we we consider funding. The years two to five or more considered a wish list for the various entities and the uh, in within the, the departments within the town. So these are the fun the projects that were currently um, being funded uh, in this budget. We have a twelve thousand for. Portabed system-wide food service equipment. Um, those are some improvements that uh, should be made to the various food uh, serving equipment within our, uh, our relationship with um, our food service uh, provider. We're uh, supposed to try to fund um, uh, an amount annually um, to make improvements to the food service line, and this what this uh, 12,000 will, will help us try to do. The building planning department was a grant match leverage. There's a um, there was there, there was a much higher request for the uh, yearly grant uh, match leverage, but we we uh, were able to try to put uh, twelve thousand five hundred. There's a possibility of a lower. Uh, the <coughs> River Cog had put in some type of a grant that we may have to do a partial match with uh, Middletown. Uh, the fire department is, re is in need of a hearse tool replacement. Um, also, the fire department is in need of the FCBA compressor. Uh, they received a FEMA grant to replace the bottles and uh, the packs, which was excellent, but the FEMA would not um, replace the compressor. So uh, to, uh, to get that, to get everything in compliance and up to date, the compressor is uh, needed. The library has been requesting security cameras um, in, uh, for the library, uh, I believe those are to be a partial. It could be inside and outside, but there uh, there were some cameras that they have been requested, and uh, the, I guess an obvious uh, reasoning for what that would be requested for. Uh, police is we've put uh, put in for one um, one SUV equipped. Um, so that would be with all the, uh, the uh, various equipment, emergency lighting and uh, other equipment, as well as uh, the computer, uh, a laptop uh, computer. Uh, the, this, uh, there's a DPW HVAC upgrades. Uh, this is trying to put some of the money for um, units that, uh, within this building that we're in here and at Town Hall. Um, there are, uh, uh, as well as it could be in any area, but in any of our buildings. But there are uh, many standalone units within um, our buildings, and uh, they have been failing. Generally, we try to track and do those within the general funds and or um, Fund 11, but there was uh, a request here for a couple, uh, as, as there's some known, um, known units that are in the five uh, 5,000 range to be uh, needed so uh, that, that request is made uh, DPW highway is the fuel pump and the reader monitoring software um, that's uh, the 55,000 that you know it's listed here is the highway it's it's really every department that's the um, when you when you get the the, uh, the gas and the diesel that's what uh, it tracks and reads and, and allocates uh, those uh, those funds um, the reader system and the software is very, very, um, it's, it's old, it's uh, it, uh, antiquated, it needs to be, uh, the parts are being very hard to find to replace. So that's a, uh, that's the reason why we picked it to, to fund out of the general fund taxation dollars, was because uh, if we were to, to try to go into a different program like the low SIP 
LOSIP doesn't become available until March of the of the subsequent um, of that year. So, in this instance, it would be like March 1st of 2023. That would put an awful burden on that system that's currently <laughs> running um, out there and, and, and struggling daily. So, we've funded that. The uh, <laughs> the wording on this, we should have probably said snow plows for pickup trucks, not pickup trucks for snow plows. That would be a great deal <laughs> uh, at 8,500. <laughs> uh, so I'll try to get that modified. But that's sort of snow plows for pickup trucks. Uh, and then there's also for the DPW Highway Vehicle Maintenance, it's an air compressor with a sandblast unit was, was needed and requested. Also for the DPW Highway Garages, salt dispensing for the truck computers. So on some of our uh, machine, some of our <coughs> trucks that we have, the newer ones, and we've done, we've retrofitted some of the other machines. We have salt dispensing uh, computers, and that helps um, when uh, when they're trying to dispense the salt, it, and it tells the road temperatures, and as well as help to monitor and distribute that uh, salt in a more even than having to do it manually. So it's a cost savings measure if we can get those accomplished. So uh, the 13-5 is, uh, is the next group, which is the DPW Highway Large Dump Truck Plow. Again, that is the plow only. Um, the town-wide computers uh, with backup appliance, including backup appliance, so annually we try to put in uh, an amount for computers, that's for computers for all um, areas within the town, um, as well as next year we, we set aside some monies in this year's budget for the backup appliance, which wa was actually to be scheduled for fiscal 23, after we did some further uh, discussions with our vendors, the contract was actually for uh, fiscal 23 to be extended. So. We will work on getting that uh, contract renewed or uh, extended uh, the backup appliance, as well as that it funds any other types of computers within our uh, our area, which would be uh, for the town side, um, which would uh, you know any of the departments, uh, sometimes the library, police, um, the various uh, town buildings. Uh, we we do upgrades and as well as servers, uh, computer servers, anything like that is it goes into that category. Um, the townwide revaluation, there was a, a plan for, uh, uh, off the top of my head, I want to say it was 40000 annually um, to go into that to that allotment, and uh, we uh, put in 10000 to keep the, the flow into the project, as we don't want to forget that we need to do this and have that set aside, and as well as there's a potential um, subsequent work that needs to be done in the following the the actual year, there's a continual work that needs to be done. So there was 10,000 allocated for that. And then in the water and sewer budget, you'll s we had to put money aside for the SCADA system. And uh, there was some additional funds for this year in that, but there was a, a piece of it on the town side that we hadn't done, which was the, there's some telemetry matters and uh, certain things just for that specific project that uh, our, our technology department stated they need around <coughs> $15,000 to help bring in this project and get it really and uh, get that going um, with, uh, with from, from the SCADA side. So that's a will be a, a very good improvement for the water department when that is able to get um, added and implemented. From the state uh, grants this year, we have expected allotment of 62, the 62, we're um, Generally, we, we allocate $25,000 to the Park and Rec Department, and they do uh, various um, uh, projects and improvements. The latest one, uh, Nate, what was the latest one that you had done there over at Brandsfield Park? The, uh, the, the guide rails updated along the whole perimeter of the parking area and uh, included an access gate for emergency vehicle access on the one that is considered to be considered. So, a good, always good. Uh, activities that we can get completed and uh, so the, the town generally seems to allocate around $25,000 into LOSA funding for various park and, and uh, field improvements. The other uh, component we allocated last the last fiscal year was for building maintenance carpeting in the building. So 
we started that and we're trying to hope maybe try to get that completed with additional 37,595. The library is also in their staff area. They had never uh, gotten their uh, carpeting uh, improved recently uh, in that area. Many of the other areas have been done uh, via um, the, the, the project or other funding that we had done. Uh, I know we've done uh, the larger, um, I think it's the Mary Flood room uh, earlier. And then uh, the project did a, a good majority of the, uh, where, you know, the area where the public would uh, have access. So the following pages list out um, some of the plans. Um, although the, the board has not put a request in, uh, we do have various projects listed out um, that we do continue just in case there is an act, uh, a grant or um, some type of activity that, that would allow us to get funding. We try to do our best to have as uh, reasonably updated uh, um, capital plan as possible so that sometimes certain grants require you to have activities in them. So we do have um, various projects by the various schools as well as system-wide. Um, you can go down the various groups in the year 2022-23. Those are the ones that are funded. If they have an L, that means they're funded by LOSIP. Otherwise, they're funded by taxation, except for the water and sewer. So the water and sewer is on page 141. So in the sewer, you saw a $380,000 um, transfer out. That was into the going into the capital fund which we have uh, the uh, replace the utility truck with tail lift the uh, plant and system improvements for 307,000 start putting away some monies for the sewer SCADA um, which we're trying to complete the water SCADA first but then try to get started with the sewer SCADA and then uh, 15,000 for pump replacements 10,000 for manhole and 5,000 for replacement of lab equipment the items um, for uh, the water department. The water department has a utility truck that has hoists and various other uh, items that I'm sure Bob could do a better job of explaining than I could, but they, that uh, does um, needs to be certified. It does need to be uh, reviewed in that, that, that there we are in need of a replacement of this utility truck. We are putting the twenty thousand additional dollars away for SCADA to try to. There was some additional um, cybersecurity matters and some other areas that when we did uh, go through that process of, uh, of of going through and bidding and quoting, and there was additional funds that would be needed, um, and so that is uh, an attempt to try to get that funding in place, and then uh, the remote read meters uh, to continually upgrade our uh, meter reading equipment. Um, without doing this, uh, this area here does not include a ma uh, uh, an extreme overhaul, which um, there's uh, you know would, which would require a larger uh, scale. If you see the estimates of in 2024 and 25 would be larger if you were to uh, change the, the whole system up to a more of a wireless. Uh, Would you like uh, your capital commission members? They do good work. That's where we got some some bit of our information from them. Did you? Uh, yeah, I think uh, now would be a good time. Uh, Chris Donahue is here from the Long Range Capital Commission. He's the chair. Chris, would you like to say anything on, on the capital improvement plan? Well, I just if you. Oh, yeah, sorry. I mean, not much to say. I mean, it's a tough budget year, but I would just say continue to push. As you saw, there were there's a lot of needs, capital improvement needs across all the infrastructure in town. And, um, you know, we're making little dents. I think there's a lot of dents that we need to make. So, I, again, I appreciate you guys doing what you need to do, but um, I think there's a lot of needs for some of our agent infrastructure that we need across all town departments. So, again, just appreciate that. and. Uh, you know, whatever we can do to help, um, you know, meet with department heads and kind of, uh, you know, prioritize stuff to make it easier for you guys to do your job, we will. So, thank you. 
thank you thank you Chris and, and thank you to the Long Range Capital Commission for for all your work on this and, and it's my hope that you will be able to meet earlier in the next year and so we'll be able to get a, a head start on you know capital for next year as well but thank you I know how much work you put into this we Tom do we have anything else to cover we have um, We do have department heads here tonight as well. If any selectmen have questions, and thank you to um, department <coughs> for coming tonight. Certainly, Tom. Do you have any more information on that water utility truck? I didn't do a very good job of explaining that. But or do you get that just? What's what? What was that? Water, 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 utility, water truck. utility truck. You good? You need more information or you good? Thank you. Okay. I get it. I, I do. I, I, hope so. yeah. I do have one question because I know it's been a discussion we've had <coughs> for a while now with uh, cap with long range capital. Um, and I'm just I was looking through the list and I'm trying to understand where it falls. I know we talked about having the proper uh, smoke and fire detection systems at the town garage and I don't I don't see it accounted for anywhere so I don't know if I'm missing it or what yeah. I mean is it accounted for in any long range yeah it's pushed out into the 2023 2024 <coughs> Is that the camera and fire alarm? Which one is it? Yeah. Yes, fire, camera and fire alarm. Is this the one that we talked about for the uh, town garage? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I just, and we could certainly talk more about this when we start deliberating, but we sit with an incredible amount of equipment sitting at the town garage and if there's anything that happens there in off hours when no one is around, there'd be no way for anyone to even know something was going on other than if they were driving around. So I know we saw in East Hampton what happened to them because of this type of, I think it was East Hampton, yeah. that had a situation where they had a huge fire and, and uh, we certainly have a lot of investment in that building. So uh, I don't know if waiting a couple more years out for that one, not just kind of concerns me but that's you know from my years of us talking on long range you know being part of listening to the long range capital speak uh, about things um, that one is one that sticks out in my mind yeah so probably what we would utilize on that and that's why we haven't necessarily put it in this current budget we probably utilize the, the funding off of the cell tower lease that we have in place for public safety communications so that was a public safety matter so that would probably be the money that would be set, set aside for that. There's been uh, work that's been done by department heads. Um, um, there's some items that I have to do to get out to bid on, and in time I will get that out to bid, and uh, we will uh, try to move forward on that component. But in the in the in this capital setting, we didn't put it in this as a in this budget, but we all uh, know that that's a uh, relatively uh, uh, matter that needs to get addressed. Okay, thanks. That's a good point, though, Ralph. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Explain that. Uh, Tom, I have one just question on page 128, uh, Resource Recovery Department. Um, and forgive me if you've already covered this or if I missed out on what you explained it as, but regular payroll goes up uh, contractually $5,700. But then I just, why does the medical insurance go up $15,000? if no new employees are hired. Like, that's such a big jump right there compared to the other departments. So, uh, right, medical is driven by, uh, you know, by a census, right? Yeah. So uh, you may be single, you may be two person, you may be a family. So there's two people within the group. So I would assume the census probably would have changed. Okay, I was just, I didn't understand that one because the other so ones were kind of stage level and then that one just popped right. up. So the, you know, it's hard in the in the uh, ancillary budgets. It's challenging. Um, so we in the in the, the general fund, we have it under one category. It's a central you know, a, a central area for fringes. Um, the other areas are more allocated um, and 
directed. So any type of change within the, their, you know, their family census, uh, you know, would uh, would have a, would cause a change to the cost. Gotcha. Thank. You. So I, I believe that's probably what you're saying. There. As you see, if you can go back to 20, and you can kind of see there probably was somebody that was in that same pay. You know, see the year before, see it go 20, and then it went down. Mm -hmm. So a possibility that there was, you know, someone married or you know, two person or whatever in that year, then it might have been somebody different. There also was a change in uh, in 20. There was a change in uh, in 21. There was a change. That more to the high deductible plan, so then you did see some cost savings as well. As well. And it's tough when it's a, such a small pool; those things get get highlighted. <laughs> uh, I have a couple questions. It's probably for Bob more than you. It's specific to the public works. Um, do, do we know if all of our street lights are LED now? Yeah, I think the majority of them are. Um, especially <coughs> those that were allowed to do it. And there were some restrictions on things when they did that type of work. So the majority of them are. And like Tom said, you know, going back to review <coughs> the differences, we did see the, the savings um, for those years when they first changed the over. So now we're just seeing that slow increase based on the cost change for the distribution so far. All right. Um, the other one is about the new signal lights they're putting on Main Street, mm -hmm. that when they put those in, uh, DOT has taken over responsibility for them? Yes, thank God. Uh, what does that leave us with for what we're responsible for? We will be responsible for one signal light at Kilderstein. So, um, which is very old, and we're going to have to start looking to, um, we, I tried um, to convince them to take that particular signal over, but they really had no interest. Because it's only for Gilbert. Right. So, um, that's a very old system as well, although uh, we made some repairs and it seems to be running um, efficiently, knock on wood. Um, but. You know, they're very costly to fix, even if you can. What you're doing right now for those boxes is you're borrowing used parts from other boxes that have been changed out. The state's, you know, been good trying to help us, but most of their stock is gone now. So we're dealing with our vendors to try to take used parts off the shelf as far as the controllers in the boxes. So we, we've been good. We're, we're going to need to have to, you know, look at that sometime soon to, to update that traffic signal box, probably update the heads as well. We've done some work there, especially the signaling was done years ago, so that seems to be working, but that'll be our only one, and that's a pretty critical one there, um, as well as the other ones that we've experienced a lot of problems with. Hopefully that job will be done sometime this summer. It's been delayed, yep. and we've been making some very expensive repairs to those lights in the area of Middlesex Avenue. Mm -hmm. What would a rough estimate be for the Gillers to <coughs> to replace? I mean, the estimates years ago were anywhere between twenty-five and thirty-five thousand just to do the control, but that that doesn't include the lights and the, um, you know if we were to change those over to an LED, more modern traffic signal that's hanging across the road, which I think you would you would definitely benefit from mm -hmm. as well. You could be you could be up much higher. Uh, and the last one I didn't see in the budget for storm drain cleaning. So storm drain cleaning is in highway, and it's under service contracts. Or okay. it might be actually a separate line item. I might be wrong with that. So we. I we, think it, it used to be a separate line item. That's why I don't think we've, I saw it. We've done time. we've done very very well with that, and um, because of our program changing over to the way we treat our roads in the winter. So we have been, um, been able to save a little money there when, when we needed, and I'm working on plans for, um, I'm working with DEEP, we, we work with them uh, on a weekly basis. Um, we're trying to get some um, forgiveness on the amount of um, storm drains that we have to do. And um, yeah, it's 4-4, four, four, storm drain cleaning, 4-4. Four, four, it should be on page 59. 
So that is a separate line item. So we continue to, what I'm trying to do is alternate between the country and downtown and try mm -hmm. to do um, a little less, about 20% less. Because what we're doing, as we measure, I, I, I developed an inspection program um, that's been out for years, but uh, it was something that I felt necessary to um, put together. And every time we're out cleaning the basins from my first year, I started measuring the depth of product that was in the basin and how much we were removing. Well, lots of times it was above the pipe. I mean, we were, we were removing feet of product. Uh, this year in particular was our first full year um, to be able to go around and basically we have two years of data um, since we changed our product over. And I think the most that I've seen, and these would be in areas of drainage that comes off in the country, you know, stuff that's coming off of areas around construction sites and stuff like that is about six and a half inches. So it's made a huge difference in our stormwater control, uh, what we're supposed to be doing to try to alleviate that and regulate that. So I think it's a great program on both ends. You know, we're, we're trying to save on both sides and I think we're, we're seeing that. Plus we're spending probably two months less time sweeping roads. And that's a lot of fuel and man hours. And with equipment as well. So overall, you can see the whole thing kind of mashes together and uh, we're hoping to you know, see some considerable savings on that. Okay. The product's a little more for what we do, but we, we, offset, we offset that pretty, pretty largely on the other end. So I'm pretty happy with those results that we've seen over the past three or four years. Right. Thank you. Hey, just one more question for you, Bob. Sure. Right there. Um, this has been brought up by you, uh, the truck wash that we need. Is that in yeah, the long range? That's a big, that's, that? that's a bit of, big of a big issue. So we, we solved a really big issue that we hope that's going to be um, long term is our salt shed. Um, we worked really hard for a few years on that and, and we, you know, we, we won the agreement with DEEP to do the improvements that were so greatly needed and stay where we are because it's a good spot. Um, it saves us a lot of time and money um, getting to and fro during a storm, so that's good. The next one is on the agenda is that. It's a requirement. Um, it's been for years. Uh, they're working on trying to, uh, you know, get municipalities especially into the state-of-the-art wash bays um, and that stuff, you know, protects the environment. It's part of that same storm water plan um, that DEEP has out to protect the environment. So we continue to look. Um, we've done some work over the past month. Uh, we're continuing to look for a spot that's going to work. Unfortunately, you know, we, we want to do all our work in one spot because it's more efficient, but our highway garage and most of that area is in the aquifer protection area. So it puts great restrictions on what we can do. But there's ways to work within that too as well, you know, for proof of that as a salt shed. You know, we're, we just need to work with our agencies who have been very good to us, a DPH and DEP, and we'll continue to do that. But we're going to need to find a location that we can we can wash all our vehicles in town in one central location um, that is part of the EPA standard. It's just not a lot of spots in town left. Um, what would be your estimate to build that? You, you know, Bob, that it, if it required a new building, you're talking big numbers. Yeah. If you can use an existing space that the town owns and that may have a building, then, then you're looking at really the equipment to add to that facility. You have to make sure it's in, in your water you know, district um, so that you have the water supply. You certainly can't be out of a, a water supply. So there's a lot that goes into it. And then you, you have to be part of your well, water and sewer. You have to have both. So you've just limited your your areas to you know less than 35 percent of your town does the water the, the wash water go into the sewer or do you have to store it and remove it no you filter you can filter and store and then there's a percentage that needs to go into a sewer system so it could be treated mm -hmm. properly as well as the same as wastewater yeah. mm -hmm. so you, you know that just really limits you based on yeah. your system so so does that system handle does that system handle both like public works and Fire equipment, or has fire got its own? It Everything. PD, equipment. fire, any town vehicles.
that'll be next around the corner for the big push for mandates. Any other questions for Bob while he's up here? All right, thank you, Bob. No, no thank you. Next time. Any other questions? Tom, did we do we cover everything, or do we still have more to cover here? We've covered. We've you know, covered every covered every um, every uh, budget area. Yeah. <coughs> so. So with that being said, we we do have a another budget workshop that's scheduled for tomorrow evening. Seeing that we, we did cover all the material, if, if the board would like, we can, we can um, cancel tomorrow's meeting and, and head straight towards the budget deliberations, which will begin on Tuesday, March 29th. Uh, but it's up to the, up to the board. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think you guys are ready for deliberations at this point, but it's up to I think, I think Tom did a great job. Um, I've got a lot of good notes. I think I need a little time to digest it, but I think I'm ready for discussion. Okay. Um, so is there consensus on that? Yes. Okay. So then our next meeting will be deliberations, which will be on Tuesday at 7 p.m. And just for the record, let me get the schedule followed by more deliberations on Wednesday, March 30th. And we may need to schedule additional deliberations depending, but we, the Board of Selectmen will be adopting the Board of Selectmen's revised budget on Wednesday, April 6th. So by Wednesday, April 6th. So um, as John mentioned, I just wanna thank you, Tom. I know how much work you put into this budget as well as um, and time and uh, and you did a great job explaining everything I think to the selectmen so I just want to thank you for your hard work on this well, thank you thank you all thank you thank you Tim. and um, with that I'll entertain a motion to adjourn and make a motion to adjourn now second thank you Sean and John all those in favor all right, all right. All right. have a good night everyone thank you <coughs>